What's going on guys, part 5 for this build, if you haven't seen part 4, 3, 2 and 1, obviously I'm going to link it in the right top corner of this screen, we pretty much build this entire car together, how to build a 150 mile an hour car, let's go. This episode, episode 5, is all about setup, set your trim to zero and turn your car on. All right, and our servo is working. Now that it's trim zero and everything is zeroed out, we're trying to obviously put the servo horn on the servo while the wheels are rather straight. Now, sometimes it's not gonna fit just exactly right, which is normal that sometimes do happen. Okay, so now that the servo horn is on, and they are relatively parallel to each other, and this is relatively straight, we can actually put the screw here. After we install the uh, servo horn and everything, tighten the screw, make sure this screw is super, super tight. And we see that these are, while parallel, they're not really 90 degrees. So what I do is I just adjust my trim accordingly. So I pretty much raise the car so there is no load. And that looks about right. Another thing that I do is make sure that my gyro is to the right direction. If you have a gyro, this is what you need to do. If you don't, don't worry about it. I turn on the gain on my gyro to about 100%, so it's as much as it gets. And then I make sure, just so I can see the movement, that it actually corrects to the right side. And it does. So if the nose goes left, I need it to correct to the right. A lot of guys hate gyros and say that they can't drive with a gyro just because they install the gyro and the gyro is reversed. So when their nose going left, they're actually correcting left, making it even worse. That's exactly why. So they're kind of battling with the car. This is the reason. So if you're using a gyro properly, you're not hating a gyro. You're in love with the gyro. It's a great technology. Now, obviously this is super, super enhanced about the gain. Now I'm not doing anything with the remote, of course. The gyro is doing it by itself. And the 441 is so sensitive it will do even small correction very nicely. So the accelerometers are pretty advanced here. This is pretty cool. So this is for steering and gyro. Another thing that is super crucial, I want you guys to be mindful of, I see a lot of you guys not adjusting your EPA, your end point adjustment values. So many of you will install a system that if you actually crank the steering all the way, let me just shed some light here. Sorry about that. I just want you guys to see exactly what is happening. You're going to turn right and the EPA is too much. You're going to put a lot of load on this area and after a while this will get loose and you'll pretty much start breaking things. So EPA, end point adjustment. You don't want to allow your car to go more than it physically can. So this is about where it's at. This is too much. Here is how to treat that. Raise your car. Make sure that your car is raised so these are free. And then you're going to go, let's target the right first. Steering EPA, right side. We're going to lower the values a lot. Now this is our right turn. And then we're going to increase a little bit and stop whenever we see that physically it's impossible. That's pretty much it, maybe less. That's it, beautiful. And now we're only asking for what is physically able. What, was that even English? Okay, so it ended up being about 38 for the right. That's it, that's all it can give us. And it used to be on 100. So we used to push so much more than we can actually can. Okay, now let's target the left side. So full left, Way too much, putting so much stress here. Let's lower the values of the left EPA. And let's just say that, I don't know, 20 or something, that's low enough. This is full left now at 20 EPA. And then we're going to increase just a little bit, little by little, until we see that it's not physically possible anymore. So we're not applying too much load. Too much. See, all that is access that we can't even allow. That's it. Now our left and our right are exactly like they're supposed to be. 
no excess movements. And that's it. Now the right and the left are exactly how they're supposed to be. They end up being right EPA 38, left EPA 73. This is just with this specific build. So when we turn right and when we turn left, we're not overloading this part here. By the way, super fast servo, pretty cool. Don't do it though. It literally destroys the car every time you do it. I'm just doing it because I'm an idiot. Anyway, right, left, not applying too much pressure, exactly what the car physically is capable of handling. Everything is parallel, beautiful, done. Okay, now what we're going to do, this is actually a bad design by Arma, where we have to drill the A-arms here in order for our hex to reach our droop screws. So what I do is I take a drill that is almost the same about size as my hex, just a little bit bigger. And what I pretty much do is I drill this area right here now this is crucial while i'm drilling i'm making sure that i'm pointing at the screw the set screw i'm not touching the set screw but i'm pointing at it and this is about how it looks and then once I'm trying to actually adjust the height, it actually slides exactly into my set screw and I can close it and open it. Let me actually change the angle so you guys can see it. Okay, so we were drilling and aiming for the set screw, which now makes the hex actually go exactly to the same direction. So now we can adjust our set screw easily. Let me just show you here. Now we can adjust our height and our set screw easily without needing to use special tools or being frustrated, literally takes two seconds. One more thing guys, there's obviously a hinge here. So just be mindful of that, just be careful. Drill the plastic kind of as close as you can to, but do not hurt that structure, obviously, right here. So now that we're ready to set up the car, we obviously have to set it up on the actual run wheels. I tend to not put my actual run wheels on the car when I'm building the car, just because I don't want to put too much pressure on them. But now that we're doing setup, we kind of have to. GRPS five slicks all around, let's go. All right, cool. Now we're going to adjust the front. In order to adjust the front in the proper way, well, at least my way, I would say, the rear shocks have to be fully tightened. That's very important. We're going to go back to the rear shocks, but in order for us to know the height here, these need to be fully tightened. After we did, we tightened both shocks to the max. Both are tight to the max. And then I'm going to show you guys just a little trick. Let me put the camera here real quick. Pinky on the right. And we close until it touches our pinky. Just the third, first third part of our pinky. Now that it's touching, we're done. Other side, pinky on the right. Third. That's it. It touched. So pinky on the left until it touches our pinky, pinky on the right until it touches our pinky. Now that it's done, you can do it maybe a little bit more here. Now that it's completely done, then we do the final balance. Okay, we're going to raise the car with a block just so it's even, and we're going to put it in a very even place in the center. So both sides are evenly lifted. Now that we did the both pinky dealio, we can actually see exactly what the wheels are doing and we can actually adjust just to compensate. Now, if the if one side of the car is substantially heavier, this method might be a little bit more tricky to actually execute. But if not, if it's just a stock build, this should be good enough. And I can see and tell that the right side is slightly off. And I think that's pretty much it. You guys can't really see it in the camera, but that's pretty much it. Both sides are raised exactly the same distance from the table. The block is in the center of the car. Now guys, this is just like an average setup. Obviously 150, 160, 70 mile an hour car will have a completely different setup. I'm just trying to get you guys going and take it from there. So now we're good. I'm actually going to measure the front height just to let you guys know in millimeters 
how high it is. And obviously I'm making sure that it's flat on both sides. Another test that I like to do, and I've shown it in many of my videos, is to actually come here, raise it just from the center and see what my wheels are doing and see that both wheels are raised up and touching at the same time. Now again, in some builds, one side will be extremely heavier than the other. So it's a completely different setup. This shock will be tightened differently. Obviously this set screw is gonna be set differently just to make sure the car is balanced. But now it seems like everything is completely balanced and the height, I'm gonna let you know in a second, height ended up being about 12 millimeter on each side. What we're trying to do is to make sure when you slam on the brakes, it doesn't really go and scrape the car too much. But when you floor it and you have a lot of squat, we don't want the front to be raised too much. So we want it to be hard on the front to actually be raised. Later, we're going to do the arrow and everything. But for now, this is the setup. Okay, now one of the biggest issues with Arma Limitless is squat, over squatting. I'm gonna lower you guys just so you guys can see the level. I obviously make sure that my rear is a lot higher than my front, but here's our problem. Even when the rear shocks are absolutely tightened in both sides, it still is allowing the, squat, the car to squat more than level. And here at 120, 30, 40, you get a wheelie and you get a backflip. This is a problem, even when the rear shocks are all the way tightened. So what we're trying to make sure is that the rear have a nice caster, the rear is higher than the front, and it allows itself to go down up to about level, but never when the rear is lower than the front. And the problem is that there's so much squat, people usually underestimate squat, and then the car actually wheelies and backflip. What we're trying to do is to make sure that the shocks are just simply physically not allowing it, and this is how. Okay, now that the shock is out of the car, obviously this is how it looks, okay, when it's out of the car. I obviously removed these two pieces, which is easy. Grab yourself a nitro tubing and cut it to this length, exactly the length of, or even a little bit more, but make sure that it does fit when the shock is all the way open. Make sure that it's about fitting this length. Now you might ask me, how do you actually install it while grabbing that so you can close this again and I'll show you it's a little tricky but uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to open this ring I'm going to try and put some better lighting here for you guys sorry about that this part is not so professionally edited but uh, you just need to kind of see the process so it is what it is open this cap here Make sure you don't spill any oil. Five millimeter. Gently, so you don't spill the oil. Now we can actually control the shaft. You pretty much just spin while holding the nitro tubing. It's just another easy way of getting the nitro tubing up there. And you can also push just a tad, and sometimes that will work. Okay, that's good. So we have a little bit of tip over there. Keep applying pressure downwards, obviously, so you know your shaft is all the way out. Nitro tubing should look like that. That ring is all the way up. Spring all the way up. These should come together. It's going to be a lot easier. And you should just put this little body in this little body. And then you're pretty much closing it like so and all the way upwards. Now sometimes those nitro tubing depends on the type that you're buying will compress a little bit more than they need to compress. So kind of play with it. Keep looking at your threads here. And that's pretty much it. I can feel that it's all the way to the end of the thread. Wipe the excess oil from your five millimeter tool. If you lost a little bit of oil from your shock, it doesn't really matter. Uh, there's a little bit of oil on the side though. I just don't want it all over the car. 
That's it. And now pretty much we have the same shock, but with the limiter that it will allow the car to get to about level, but the limiter, it'll just be a lot harder for it to actually go to too much. So obviously now we're going to close the shock. And soon I'm going to show you the difference when it comes to squat. So now we're actually compressing everything. Shock should be tightened all the way. So you have the nitro tubing over there and shock is tightened all the way. How do we know? It will just jump. That's it, just did. This is how our shock should look like when we're done. And it's allowing us to compress, but it's super, super hard because we have the nitro tubing here limiting us. And soon enough, we're gonna see on the car how that looks. All right, looking great. Make sure that the shocks are about the same size and we can put them back on the car. Shocks are installed on the car and now it will physically not allow me to go down more than leveled. So we never want the back to be lower than the front. That's a backflip scenario. So now, no matter how much force, obviously be kind of gentle, it's your RC after all, but no matter how much force, it will not allow the back to ever be lower than the front. And that's exactly what we want. By the way, guys, make sure that you do all the setup with everything on the car so you know exactly the weight and everything. So this is a run scenario with the batteries, with everything. This is how you actually set up your car. Okay, so our setup is almost ready. Shocks are done. Rear shocks are done. Squat levels are exactly how we want them to be. This is perfect. Now we're going to do some aerodynamics and then we're just gonna make sure the toe and camber are correct. 